Good afternoon. Dear listeners, welcome to AUGA Group Meeting with Investors. I'm Emilia from NASDAQ, and I'll be moderating today's event. We will start with a presentation from the management, which will be followed by the Q&A session. Please be informed that this webinar is being re recorded and will be available for rewatch. As always, I encourage every one of you to share your questions in the Q&A section at the bottom of your screen, and you can submit them either anonymously or with your name. With that said, I'm pleased to introduce today's presenter, Chief Financial Officer Mendogas Ambrases. Please, the floor is yours, and good luck. Hello, Emilia. Thank you for the introduction, and good afternoon to everyone. Um, as we have uh, a slide, uh, so I just repeat uh, that my name is Mendogas Ambrases, I'm CFO of Auger Group, and uh, I'll try to tell you a little bit more uh, how uh, Auger Group was performing and uh, what was happening uh, in, in Auger Group in the first quarter of uh, 2023. And, uh, and we will try to answer your questions uh, later after the presentation. So for the start, uh, we have this uh, standard uh, slide, uh, just giving uh, short information. What is our group uh, for today? Uh, I will not go uh, through those figures because I really believe that uh, every one of you know the group and, and know what we are doing. But personally, I really believe and hope uh, that starting from the third quarter of this year, we will have one uh, quite important uh, change in this slide, uh, also quite important change in our financial reports, because uh, uh, according to the plan uh, from the third quarter, we will uh, start to report and start to disclose uh, results from our new activities activities related to our sustainability or strategy related to sustainability and uh, results related to activities uh, related to, to, to that. Uh, because uh, I really hope that uh, you know that for the last couple of years, uh, we really were working uh, on quite a few things. And uh, we had uh, an event uh, two weeks ago where our general manager and main shareholder, Kestutis, uh, told a little bit more and a little bit in more details uh, how uh, our group will operate uh, in the future. Uh, what uh, are like three key uh, areas uh, of our focus in the future? And, those three key areas uh, which are related to those sustainable activities, which we uh, said in, in our strategy we want to implement almost four or five years ago. And lastly, uh, how all this uh, can be implemented in Alga farms uh, in the beginning and how this can be shared with other farmers in Lithuania or in other countries in the future. So I will get back uh, to, to, to this uh, information uh, later in the presentation, but uh, for the start, let's get back to our uh, standard uh, current uh, activities and uh, uh, talk about the results of those four current uh, business uh, segments for the first quarter of 2023. So if just to talk about uh, overall results uh, of the group for the first quarter, I would say that uh, there are like two most important uh, messages about our activities and results. Uh, first of all, uh, that, uh, uh, and I think it's a good news that uh, production activity is, is, is really stable because we had uh, quite a few years uh, with different problems in different uh, segments. And uh, I think uh, partly because of that, uh, sales, uh, they, they are growing. Uh, yes, uh, I have to add that uh, one of the reasons it's not only about like growth and, and the new things, uh, uh, prices were also one of the factors which allows us to grow in terms of revenue uh, comparing uh, 2023 with 2022 because you know, uh, prices for agricultural uh, products, they, they increased uh, quite significantly last year. And now when we sell remaining 
part of last year harvest. Of course, it's uh, in higher uh, agreed prices, and this allows us to, to, to have this growth, growth as well. But uh, nevertheless, uh, I think stability in production, production was also uh, one of the key factors. And the second uh, message, uh, unfortunately, you know, we, we have a net loss uh, for the first quarter. Uh, I, I will provide more details uh, when we will talk about agricultural segment uh, regarding the reasons why uh, this uh, negative result uh, was accounted for the first quarter because crop growing activity or agricultural activity is really the biggest uh, factor in, in this result. But I can say that uh, this loss uh, reflects First of all, decrease in prices this year in, in uh, agricultural products, and uh, most uh, importantly, uh, decrease in our forecasts for uh, harvest or prices of the harvest for this year. But as I said, uh, we will talk about this in more details when, as always, we will go uh, segment by segment. And as always, uh, let's, let's start uh, from growing, crop growing, and uh, for the start, uh, just uh, like I think the most uh, important factor this year and where the biggest changes uh, come uh, from, it's uh, changes in, in pricing. Uh, I don't think that you know it's a news for, for participants of the webinar, but uh, prices uh, for majority of, of, of crops uh, decreased from, I would say, record uh, level we, we had in 2022. And uh, as you can see from the graph, uh, which we always show uh, prices uh, of uh, conventional and organic wheat in, in Germany and then prices we have in Lith Lithuania, uh, we see the same uh, tendency that uh, prices were really going down. Uh, in organic, they are still slightly above uh, what uh, prices we had in 2021. But I think uh, the most uh, important uh, thing uh, regarding organic market that still uh, there are lots of lots of uncertainties uh, what could be the price level when the new harvest will come uh, because uh, and this also reflects in the market activity uh, I think it's uh, we didn't see such low activity in at least organic uh, market uh, in the last uh, five years and it also shows uh, in uh, contracts uh, we we made uh, already because uh, you know we start uh, to make a contracts from new harvest generally from february march every year but this year was really exceptional uh, that market was really very passive and i think everyone is really looking uh, and trying to understand where this new level uh, of prices will end up. And that's why activity was very, very limited. And if you see the contracts uh, or amount of contracts we, we have for the harvest, uh, it is lower comparing to, to the level we had a year ago uh, and uh, comparing to, I would say, historical levels we, we, we had every year. Uh, and it's, of course, difficult to predict uh, what could be the level of the prices after the harvest because now, first of all, of course, the trend is uh, that prices uh, had decreased uh, from the peak uh, we had last year. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, there are questions, what would be the harvest, uh, not only in Lithuania, but in, in Europe uh, as well, because this will also be, be a huge factor uh, how the prices will change. Uh, we also have quite high costs uh, uh, coming from the last year, which I would say act as some kind of uh, stabilization for prices to go uh, even further down. Uh, but there is also a question about uh, stocks uh, remaining from the last year. So you know, we are conservative in our forecasts, and you will see how this affects uh, our results. But uh, we believe that you know we will have clear clear picture of uh, price levels after the harvest uh, only because this year really has lots of lots of uncertainties at least in the organic market. So if we talk results uh, of crop growing uh, for the first quarter, so 
gain on the biological assets is really the biggest uh, factor. And uh, this gain is really based on, on our forecasts, how we see uh, result of crop growing activities uh, will end up uh, when the season will be over. So this year is also quite different uh, from uh, figures we have uh, historically, because if you remember uh, for the last uh, three, uh, five years, at least those two we have here in the graph, you know, we had uh, some changes in, in uh, our forecasts and gain valuation only in the third or fourth quarter, because uh, unfortunately those were negative changes and they were related mainly to the forecasts of, of yields. And if we had uh, lower yields, so we had to recalculate this gain of bi on biological assets. And then we had small or negative results at the uh, third or fourth quarter. This year, we really trying to have I would say even more conservative approach and starting from the first quarter, we uh, did revaluation of our forecasts we had in the beginning of the year. So what, uh, what has changed? Uh, cultivated area, of course, is very similar. It's almost the same uh, because we didn't have any problems after the winter. So generally what was sowed in, in, uh, in the autumn. So uh, all those areas uh, are growing. Uh, uh, growing. Uh, if we talk about our yields, uh, we still think that, as I said, the conditions uh, up to now are not bad. So generally, we don't see reasons why to change uh, to the positive or to the negative side uh, of our forecasted yields. And uh, maybe important thing to mention is that uh, for the last couple of years, uh, every year, looking at our historical results, uh, we start the year with let's say lower expectations and lower uh, forecast yields. So, you know, being, trying to be more conservative uh, in, in this area as well, but we did uh, quite substantial changes in our forecasted prices because prices, yes, they are partly based on the contracts we, we did, but uh, if you remember from the previous slide, number of contracts is it's quite low at uh, this point of time, but uh, if we see development in the market, so our, uh, forecasted uh, sales uh, prices and based on that uh, our gain on uh, uh, biological uh, re initial recognition of biological assets you know this uh, uh, had a negative uh, change and this change we did in the first quarter this year uh, just uh, trying to be more conservative uh, on, on our forecast and be more, let's say, stable on, on the results, not to have fluctuations we had for the last uh, few years. And the last big part in this calculations, costs, uh, uh, we, let's say, started the season with quite a high level of cost because last year uh, we had substantial growth in, in uh, various uh, cost uh, uh, elements. And uh, this will have effect on uh, cost, overall cost uh, for the season. But uh, we see, at least in some areas, quite positive development. For example, fuel costs, uh, they, they really decreased uh, from the peak last year. And you know, we are now uh, buying fuel on much lower cost comparing to, 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 to the last year. But effect on, on the season, we will be able to evaluate after uh, at least the second quarter or finally after the third quarter only. So right now we didn't make any adjustments. Uh, though, as I said, you know, there is possibility at least uh, that uh, you know, we could have lower cost than forecasted, but we still need to, to go through second or maybe for the third uh, quarter to confirm that and make that change. So for time being, uh, big uh, changes were made in, in the forecasted price. And this led that for the first quarter of this year, our gain was, was only 100,000 euros. So generally, it's almost 3.5 million lower than we had last year. And as you will see uh, from the results of the whole group or results uh, of crop growing segment, that's where really the difference between last year result and this year result uh, comes. So just to sum up, uh, result uh, of crop growing segment uh, for the first quarter. So as, as I mentioned, it's almost 
3.5 million difference in, in gross profit year on year. And so generally it really comes uh, from this uh, gain, uh, uh, which is based on more conservative uh, forecast. Of course, uh, you can't say that, uh, you know, this decrease in prices is, is more like a, in effect in model only, or is just in forecast. Uh, we understand that this is a trend and we see that decreasing uh, prices, uh, they put pressure on our sales results because uh, still part of the harvest from last year was not contracted. So, you know, if it's not contracted, so of course, uh, the decreasing prices, uh, we could have lower or, or, or negative result from uh, sales activities uh, when we will have to sell remaining uncontracted uh, part of the harvest. Uh, second important note uh, that we don't uh, expect and we don't calculate any significant uh, or major changes in, in the subsidies we receive as a group. So generally this should be in very similar level to what we had uh, in 2022. And uh, uh, as I said in the very beginning, it, it uh, uh, at the end, uh, we have a gross profit of 1.5 million for the first quarter in crop growing activity. So generally the decrease is very similar to what uh, we have in gain on revaluation of biological uh, assets recognized in current period. So that's where the difference in results comes from. Second segment, uh, dairy, uh, generally I would say it's in very similar situation because prices uh, they grow, uh, grew uh, last year in crop growing and in dairy. So now we have the opposite trend in both segments as well. So just uh, to go through, uh, let's say two key uh, dynamics. So first of all, production. If you remember last year, we had this dip in, in production uh, uh, in the second and third quarter, uh, just because of some changes we did in the uh, feed of the cows. Uh, and uh, with the new uh, harvest and feed getting back to the original plan, uh, we were back on, let's say, uh, track with the production. And I would say that this uh, continued in the first quarter as well. So as you can see from the graph, our production level was uh, much higher than, or higher than it was in 2021 in the same level uh, of the production we had in 2022 before this uh, dip in the second and third uh, quarter. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, you know, this uh, okay news in production was not compensated by milk prices, which decreased uh, quite substantially. Uh, starting from the end of the last year, but in the first quarter, uh, you can see from the graph that this uh, decline was very steep and you know, decline in organic milk prices or milk prices in general, you know, was uh, one of the steepest in, in Lithuania and the neighboring regions uh, comparing to price changes in, in all EU. Uh, and this uh, really led you know, to, to the very symbolic but still gross uh, loss uh, from uh, dairy segment uh, for the first quarter. Uh, another uh, reason why uh, our sale and production volumes were a little bit lower than we had uh, last year, it's uh, slightly a lower number of cows uh, we are operating. But as you can see from the figures in, in, the, in the left, uh, I would say it's more like a technical uh, thing. Uh, there are some cycles uh, in, in uh, cows uh, living uh, uh, period. So generally, yes, we have no point of time when the number of uh, milking cows has decreased a little bit, but uh, as our the number of heifers and bulls is, is much higher than we had a year ago. So generally it's just a matter of time uh, when our production capacities will get back to maximum uh, and then from production side as said, I believe situation is, is quite okay. Uh, price uh, level is like the biggest uh, concern and the biggest challenge uh, for time being. Another segment is uh, mushroom, grow, uh, mushroom growing. And here I would say that uh, we are uh, in a situation when after two years 
of constant problems, issues, uh, finally, we are really much more uh, uh, sure that the uh, segment is, is, is really back on track. And if you remember from our previous presentations, we mentioned that there are like three key factors uh, which affect uh, how, uh, what would be result of the segment. Costs, uh, prices of product and, and production volumes. So if we talk about the first one, uh, costs, uh, you know, I would say that they are really in control. Uh, I'm not, uh, we are showing here a graph of uh, electricity and gas prices and uh, all of you know uh, latest development in, in those prices, so they were really favorable for um, mushroom growing segment, because we had really the very tough uh, third quarter last year, and, and it's obvious reason you see the prices of electricity and gas uh, at that point of time, so now they are much lower, but it's not only about that, I think the company implemented and they are controlling other cost, uh, costs uh, as well, so you know, we are in, in, in good situation there. Uh, secondly, which is I think even more important, and it's even bigger factor in, in our improving results in the segment, that we managed uh, to increase uh, prices of, of our products every quarter uh, for the last uh, five quarters. And you can see that even if we compare uh, prices uh, in the first quarter this year to last quarter last year or first quarter last year, so we have uh, an improvement. So, uh, yeah, if we take just overall figure, the growth uh, of price was a little bit lower, but if we take uh, out the effect of transportation, uh, product uh, mix, and so on, so generally we have uh, almost 22% uh, higher price uh, for mushrooms, and we believe that it's not temporary trend, that it's not the same situation we have uh, in dairy or crop growing where prices you know, went up and then down quite uh, significantly and then quickly. So here we have much more stable situation. And then we believe that due to changes in supply after those uh, two quite bad years uh, for the industry, we will have this higher level of prices, uh, which will allow us uh, operate uh, successfully in, in this segment as well. And the third uh, part is production. Um, you know, you can see from the graph that, you know, it's not a very good result, I would say. We, I think we still have improvement there uh, because uh, it's uh, you know, uh, lower uh, of uh, first quarter production than we had, uh, for example, in 2021. But the good news is uh, that we didn't have any uh, uh, fluctuations. You know, we had the stable production for all three months of the quarter, and generally we have the same stable production and in, in slightly increasing production for April uh, and May this year as well. So generally uh, issues uh, we had previously, uh, you know, they are, it seems like they, they are solved and, you know, we are back on, on normal operation in, in the segment. And it really shows in, in the results, uh, you know, after, I would say very, very difficult uh, year 2022. We have a gross profit of almost 600,000 euros. So this is even better than we had in 2021. So this is positive developments and we still see uh, some room for further improvement uh, there as well. And uh, last of our current segments of MCG. Uh, so generally, I would say it's also quite a uh, stably good uh, quarter, if, if, if I may say. Uh, the good news is that we are still growing in terms of sales. Uh, and uh, what is also, I think it's uh, achievement of, of our sales team that uh, you know, for, for quite a few years, uh, we uh, managed uh, to successfully launch our activities in US market, some other uh, markets, but uh, we were always trying to get into one of the larger EU markets. Uh, so uh, in the first quarter, Germany became the second largest export market uh, for FMCG segment with the sales of almost 400,000 euros. So I think, you know, this is a good step, you know, first of all, getting into markets which are, you know, or you can say even home markets for us. 
secondly, diversification of our uh, export markets, because you know we had quite a big dependence uh, from US. Of course, when you are that small in US, maybe it doesn't create uh, that big risk, but still uh, diversification is always good. So this is, I think, uh, quite a good uh, achievement. But uh, I think the most important uh, news uh, what happened in the segment uh, this year, uh, it really happened in the second quarter of, of this, this year, when uh, we launched uh, our new product line. And this product line uh, launched in uh, May. Uh, it's related to all those new activities uh, I mentioned in the very beginning, uh, implementation of our sustainability strategy. Uh, so what we are generally doing, you know, we are trying to create a new uh, product uh, category. Uh, we are creating uh, basic everyday products and we are offering those basic everyday products uh, for, for, for consumers. And, uh, you know, the products are produced from organic raw materials from, from our farms. And, uh, you know, right now, we can't claim uh, that our production process is 100% uh, sustainable, you know, meaning CO2 neutral, et cetera. That's why we call it even mission to no cost to nature. But, you know, we are starting to, to implement those principles and uh, we are, you know, giving a promise to the consumers that, you know, we will work towards that, that our end goal is really to provide uh, those products with uh, uh, not only mission, but actual no cost uh, to nature. So uh, this uh, new product line, as I said, was uh, launched in, in May. So, you know, right now uh, you can find uh, those products uh, in almost 400 locations all over Lithuania. You know, we are working with almost all the retail chains. You know, we are working to expand our distribution uh, network. And we started from uh, nine SKUs, uh, but there is a plan to increase the uh, number of products we are selling. But as I said, we are not planning to go into some niche products. Uh, the products is to produce raw material in Lithuania, in uh, our farms, in uh, using sustainable technologies we already have and sustainable te technologies we will develop uh, in the future and uh, to uh, offer those uh, products to local consumers, consumers in Lithuania, because you know, that's also part of sustainability story to sell uh, products you produced locally uh, to the local uh, consumers. So uh, right now it's a little bit too early to, to talk about the uh, financial impact uh, of uh, this launch, because we just have you know, uh, less than one month uh, but uh, this is uh, really important uh, for our group. And this is one of the key areas where we see, uh, you know, where we see our future. And this is one of the priorities uh, for, for our implementation of our strategy. So uh, getting back to uh, this transformation of how, as I mentioned in the very beginning, uh, uh, we, we, we had the presentation and I hope that uh, at least some of you were able to participate or were able to, to listen to this presentation later on. But I will try also to go through like through key elements of, of the transformation and how we see this uh, will happen and how this could affect uh, operational activity and results of, of our group as well. So um, first of all, uh, you know, we had to, to make, uh, I don't know, some homework and, and, and to have uh, structure ready for, for, for those changes. So in Auga group, uh, we had created a subholding uh, called Auga community, which generally will control all those uh, new activities which are related to, to sustainability. So Auga community will have uh, like three key new business uh, units or business lines and these are like three key pillars of our future business model so first of all Albertec is the company which uh, is uh, developing uh, new technologies uh, and then will scale them so you you know like the first uh, technology which was 
I would say, widely introduced uh, tractor, uh, which we developed and which we are testing right now. Our trade uh, will be the company or is the company uh, which uh, uh, working with uh, uh, manufacturing companies uh, will produce uh, consumer products, uh, will be engaged in brand marketing and in the future uh, will do some maybe co-branding uh, and our sustainability labels. And third, uh, I would say the newest uh, company in, in, in this subholding is our sofa. So generally this is the company where we would have all know-how of, of uh, our way of doing agriculture. So first of all, it's more like a shared service center, uh, providing uh, knowledge, standards, uh, certification. Uh, it's also a structure which uh, will allow to use principles of sharing economy, not only for the Auger group, uh, but uh, for the third parties as well. And thirdly, the company has already developed some and will develop in the future digital tools, uh, how to make uh, all those operations more effective and more efficient. Uh, how this, uh, uh, how, you know, this will affect uh, and how this will be transferred uh, to our agricultural uh, entities and agricultural activity. So what we already did, uh, we had established 11 agricultural cooperatives. Uh, which uh, will concentrate uh, specialists, I mean employees, which will concentrate the uh, machinery. And generally, they will provide the uh, agricultural services to our farms uh, in the start, but uh, to all third parties in the future uh, as well. So just to visualize uh, those, those uh, cooperatives I, I mentioned. So here you can see where those uh, cooperatives are established, where they do operate, where we are building or already built uh, biomethane plants, which will be used in, in our activities. So generally this uh, structure allows us that those 11 uh, cooperatives uh, together with their hubs or centers, uh, you know, first of all, now they can uh, uh, cover uh, those 30, 8,000 hectares uh, our group is uh, cultivating. But, uh, you know, we see that uh, how they are created, uh, theoretically, they will be able to serve uh, farmers uh, in 25% of territory in Lithuania. And, you know, I can't say that, you know, this is like a target, a goal, but, you know, we believe that this is a potential uh, you know, what uh, we can offer and to whom we want uh, to offer those services uh, in the future. So the plan is that, you know, we will start uh, operating uh, this uh, structure from uh, beginning of uh, July. And, you know, the, uh, this will be a test for, uh, for ourselves to test uh, and then to, to make sure that everything works. And uh, in the second part of, of the year, you know, there will be possibility to the third parties, to, to the farmers to join uh, our community as well. So, you know, first of all, of all for them to, to use technologies we will be having. Secondly, to use uh, uh, those sharing principles and to benefit uh, from that, to, to benefit from our know-how we have in our competence center and to benefit uh, producing uh, sustainable uh, uh, raw material, which can be transformed uh, to FMCG goods uh, sold uh, to the final consumer. Uh, and this is uh, also, the, I think it's important question for, for the investors uh, and uh, uh, shareholders, current shareholders, or future shareholders, you know, how this will affect uh, our revenues and then uh, you know, how and what we will earn from those new activities. So generally with those new free activities, we have uh, new free new revenue streams uh, for our group. So if we talk about uh, our uh, Auger tech arm, so I think it's the most obvious uh, one, you know, producing uh, uh, technology, selling, and maybe with some financing structure, leasing it uh, to, to 
uh, to users of, of, of the technology. It's, it's, uh, it's the first uh, revenue stream. Uh, secondly, if we talk about uh, Auga Sofa, so generally this will work as a franchise uh, structure, then uh, users of uh, or parties which will uh, join Auga community will be paying a franchise uh, fee, and, and this is the second uh, revenue stream. And the sustainable food basket or our trade activities, I think it's also quite obvious, you know, uh, producing branding and selling uh, products uh, generates uh, the third revenue stream for our group uh, as well. Uh, but it's not uh, only this. Uh, I think uh, it's also important to, to, to mention that it's not uh, only uh, like uh, new activities uh, will, will generate uh, new revenues for the group. Uh, you know, technologies we are developing, you know, we believe they will have additional positive uh, effect to our current uh, agricultural operations. Uh, for example, you know, if we talk about uh, production of uh, biomethan, you know, we will have uh, dig Digestat as uh, uh, outcome of the process uh, which uh, will be used as a fertilizer uh, in our farms and you know there are some researchers saying that applying uh, liquid uh, state of uh, fertilizer could give you a boost in, in the yields uh, comparing to the current uh, uh, operational model when you know it's a hard form of, of, of fertilizers used. Uh, you know scaling uh, of our activities uh, will also allow us and scaling, I mean, uh, by attracting third parties uh, to our operational model. And you know, this can be done in Lithuania, this can be done in other countries as well. So generally, scaling your operations will allow uh, our group to be more efficient as well, to have, let's say, more uh, or better negotiation power uh, regarding your suppliers and so on. So it's not only those three uh, areas, but, you know, uh, additional improvements in, in our results will come from the technologies and scaling of the operations uh, we, we plan with those changes we are doing. And here is a timeline uh, of, of uh, things we are doing right now. Um, I, I don't think maybe it uh, makes sense to, to, to go through uh, in, in the details, but uh, one of the important uh, things is on the very top of, of the slide. Uh, so generally, up uh, to today, all those innovations, they were financed from uh, group's internal resources. And we understand that, uh, you know, if we talk about scaling of, of uh, technologies, you know, if, if we want to change our existing fleet of tractors to the tractors developed by our group, for example, you know, we need quite substantial amount of uh, resources and uh, the group doesn't have that kind of resources at, at, at the moment. So, you know, we fully understand and we fully plan that all future uh, steps of this transformation should come not uh, from internal resources of the group, uh, but uh, we will be looking uh, uh, for external uh, financing uh, uh, for that. And uh, we believe that, you know, we did some homework, we prepared, let's say, legal structure for that. Uh, we will have model up and running in the second part of the year. So, you know, we will be uh, uh, able to have very clear message, you know, what we are doing and why we need uh, this additional funding uh, for. So generally, of course, uh, we will have to uh, go for, you know, venture capital, you know, as an as, as option. But second, uh, and I think it's also very important uh, option is EU funding uh, for uh, implementation of uh, green economy or change of uh, current economy to the green economy. Because, for example, at least in Lithuania, there is almost 1 billion euros allocated for such programs uh, for the next uh, two years. So generally companies which has ideas, which has plans uh, and can come up with a very detailed plan, what we want to do, they, they can get uh, funding like that from uh, this source. And, and we see uh, that you know we have uh, quite a big potential to, to be among 
the companies which has something to offer and which has not only idea, but which has you know, prototypes in place, we have uh, testing in place, we have legal structure, and we have already operating model in, in, in our farms. And of course, uh, hopefully in the future, when this model uh, will prove itself, uh, we can get back to, let's say, standard uh, bank financing for at least some part of, of the businesses. But uh, this is a really important task for us uh, for the second part of, of, of the year, because as I said uh, earlier, uh, we understand uh, that, you know, need is quite uh, substantial and then the, you know, the goal and the target is that all this transformation should be done from external financing, but not uh, putting pressure on our, let's say, daily operations and then and daily cash flow of, of, of the group. And as always, just a short update of uh, technological developments we are doing. Um, uh, I think uh, the most important is, uh, or the one uh, everyone is, is uh, waiting for, for some news is the second one, uh, be on FM infrastructure, because there are not so uh, big news in the first and the third one. Uh, so, you know, we have uh, first uh, facility operating already in, in April. Uh, we are finalizing uh, the remaining uh, two. Uh, but what we're doing right now, because the situation in the market is that, uh, of course, gas prices had decreased uh, quite substantially uh, as well. So generally, the focus is, uh, and we are in uh, negotiation process, first of all, to supply uh, the gas uh, to the grid. And this uh, you know, allows us uh, to change the market we are operating. Because you know, we can transport the gas uh, to, 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 to our buyers, but this will be mainly limited to, to Lithuania or nearby regions. If we have possibility to supply to the grid, generally we can sell uh, the gas uh, all over Europe. And uh, that uh, we are also in negotiations to sell the gas, not only as a gas, but the gas with a green certificate. This, uh, and this uh, changes uh, pricing level uh, quite substantial as well. So just because we are in negotiation process right now, so we are not able to, to provide more details uh, about this, uh, but uh, you know, hopefully you know, we will have more news in, in the next uh, uh, presentations, or maybe if we'll have some substantial news, we'll have separate announcement regarding that in, in the future as well. And as always, uh, uh, information about uh, our share price. Uh, uh, we have maybe one change. Uh, previously, we had three companies uh, uh, following us and, and doing the research. Unfortunately, LHV decided that they will. Uh, decrease uh, the list of companies they are following and so now we have in light research and woods uh, the two companies uh, doing the analysis and then uh, making equity research uh, for us and uh, that's it as always here you can find all additional information uh, legal disclaimer and uh, i think now i'm ready for your questions Thank you very much for the presentation. And indeed, now let's proceed with the Q&A session. But before we start, I would like to remind all the attendees that you can send in your questions in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen, and I will read them out loud. So let's begin with the first question, which is as following. The cash flow statement shows that there was a 5.88 million inflow from newly issued bonds in Q1 2023. What are these bonds? Uh, could you please provide such details as interest rate and maturity? Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, yes, uh, thank you for the question. First of all, uh, yes, uh, uh, that's right. Uh, we uh, issued, uh, or at least one company of the group uh, issued uh, bonds uh, for almost 6 million uh, euros. Um, and uh, I don't think, you know, we will be able, or we would not uh, just because of some 
commercial information. We will not provide uh, specific uh, details as, as interest rate uh, right now. Uh, maybe the reason why those bonds were issued, uh, uh, we see and we saw development in, in the market that uh, liquidity is, is quite low uh, in terms of uh, future uh, contracts, uh, future agreements, because uh, every year for the last I don't know, many years uh, when we started uh, to do pre-contracts, uh, we also had agreements for advance payments and uh, with the low market, uh, we saw that, you know, we need to secure additional funding to be uh, safer on, on our liquidity situation. So that was uh, done having uh, this uh, bond issue. Uh, and uh, maturity uh, uh, is... Uh, uh, it's one and a half years, uh, I believe. Uh, but as I said, more uh, specific information uh, I don't want to, to, to disclose just because from the commercial uh, side. All right, thank you very much for your answer. Let's continue. So the next question is as following. Financial results have worsened while debt remains high. Could you please comment on potential risk of breaching debt covenants? Thank you. Mm. Yeah, it's very, uh, it's a question where you can either answer very shortly or you can give very long uh, answer. Uh, yes. Uh, for the last couple of years, uh, we breached uh, several covenants uh, with our uh, partners, financial institutions. Uh, we had a substantial breach uh, after very poor 20, year 2021. Um, you know, we, we, we had some issues uh, regarding some standalone covenants uh, last year. And uh, we also uh, will have uh, could uh, will have some breaches uh, this year after the first quarter, but I would say this year it's more like a technical uh, breach uh, because if uh, we calculate uh, covenants for um, last 12 months, uh, so generally now uh, we will include a very poor first quarter this year and we will exclude quite good first quarter last year. So generally I think uh, this situation just shows that first of all, we are working very closely with uh, financial institutions to, to try to explain uh, our situation, to explain situation in the market and how we see a situation going further and how we want to uh, improve that, uh, how we see to change that. Uh, for the last couple of years, uh, we really had the trust uh, from financial institutions. So in much worse situation, you know, we, ha we had all the waivers uh, from them, uh, uh, in terms of uh, breach of the covenants. Uh, and I don't uh, expect that after the first quarter, uh, you know, we will have uh, a substantial increase of, of this risk uh, because definitely we are currently working uh, for like technical uh, waivers uh, from financial institutions. But uh, I think they also understand the uh, situation in uh, agricultural business right now. We understand the situation because of this seasonality in, in, in our uh, group uh, results. So, you know, you know this, this is a constant work with our partners, but I think uh, up to, to now, we were able to explain and uh, have the trust. And I really believe that, you know, this will continue. Thank you very much for your answer. What was the average cost of debt in Q1 2023? Could you please comment on that? Mm. Um, um, unfortunately, I don't have a figure uh, right now, so I don't want to, to say the figure which will not be exact, but uh, of course, uh, obviously the uh, costs uh, has uh, risen uh, substantially if we compare the costs uh, year on year, just because you know, the year ago, Euribor was, 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 was zero and uh, more than around 60% of our portfolio is uh, the floating interest rate. So, you know, when you add up uh, 
uh, increased Euribor, you have a substantial increase of uh, financial costs. Uh, but sorry, I, I can't give an exact figure right now. I just need to check it. Thank you very much. Uh, we have one more question remaining. Thus, I would like to remind all the attendees to send in your questions now, and we will discuss them in this session. So the next question would be as following. Could you please comment on what interest you have received so far from potential buyers of AUGA tractors? Thank you. Um, I think uh, what uh, I maybe will try to explain that uh, we don't want to become just a tractor uh, producer. Because yes, we had some interest uh, from, I would say from all over the world, you know, when you will have a tractor available, can we buy something not only from agricultural companies, but for example, companies in, involved in construction business, which has some uh, sustainability goals and that could be one of the areas we can improve. But our goal and idea is that, you know, first of all, our uh, production of tractors uh, you know, should be uh, targeted uh, to the users of uh, AUGA uh, or members of AUGA community, because it's not only about the tractor, you know, you will provide the, the full um, solution uh, for the buyers. It's not only tractor, but it's also uh, biogas. Uh, uh, it's not... Uh, uh, you know, if you're using tractor and you could also benefit from that just because of, uh, you know, lower costs uh, of using gas comparing to fossil fuel, uh, but uh, you will produce uh, food uh, in more sustainable way and you can benefit uh, from that if uh, goods you are producing, they, for example, are transferred to FMCG goods and sold to retail uh, customers. So uh, I would say that first of all, and the biggest focus is uh, to have uh, this tractor used by members of AUGA community. But of course, if there will be third parties willing to buy that, uh, so you know, we would be more than help, welcome, they would be more than welcome to do that. Thank you very much for your answer. In your view, how do you explain the muted market reaction to the share price after the investor day two weeks ago? Thank you. You know, that's a very tough question. Uh, I don't think I, I have uh, uh, ability to, to explain market reaction. You know, market uh, knows uh, better all the time. Um, Honestly, you know, we expected a little bit uh, more reaction, you know, that's why also, you know, we halted uh, trade uh, of the shares uh, for a day. But I believe that, uh, you know, uh, this is quite a big change and it's quite a complicated change. Uh, and, uh, you know, we need uh, to provide more information, uh, what we are doing and uh, how this will affect uh, the company. Because even today, uh, from my presentation, uh, I understand that uh, everyone, you know, would like to get uh, specific figures, uh, specific numbers, you know, what we, you will do, what will be, I don't know, sales, uh, FBDA uh, from, from that activity. But, uh, you know, it's still a little bit too early to do that. Uh, and if we do very generic uh, forecasts, uh, so, you know, they will not uh, show uh, actual situation. So I think, uh, as I said, it's quite a big change and uh, we just need uh, some time and more information to explain and maybe just to prove that this, uh, this works and hopefully then we will see reaction from the market. Thank you very much. It seems that all the questions are answered. On behalf of AUGA Group and NASDAQ, thank you all for joining. Dear management, thank you very much for the presentation and the Q&A session. The recording, as always, will be available in the company's website and NASDAQ Baltic YouTube channel. Have a good evening, everyone, and goodbye. Thank you.